DJ Academics just did something on his stream that I applaud, I commend, and I appreciate. But it may change the trajectory of his career moving forward. If you're not aware yet, in hip-hop media, there's a class of elites. Now, the class of elites in hip-hop media ranges from personnels who are just embedded into the infrastructure of these companies, such as Nadeska, Speedy Norman, Jinx, and it ranges all the way down to people who you really don't know, but somehow you see them at every award show, and there's no shortage of opportunities for them. They go from Viacom to iHeartMedia to Revolt to BT. Reference it to high school. There's a cool kids table. And if you are part of the class of elites in hip hop media, you get rewarded a seat at the cool kids table. But if you're not one of the hip hop media elites, well, like myself and academics, you don't get to sit at the cool kids table. You don't get access to certain rooms and opportunities like other people who may not be doing as much as you do. Like, Academics is probably doing much more than Andeska, Speedy, Norman, and Jinx, and I love those three, but Ak is doing more. But Ak is not afforded opportunities that they are afforded because Academics isn't really falling in line. But with those opportunities come some stipulations. You got to fall in line. You can't go against the agenda of the infrastructure. You can't criticize the head honcho at the establishment, such as iHeartMedia, BT, Viacom, Revolt. So when the Diddy scandal was going viral this week, when Cassie exposed Diddy, I was really curious as to how these media journalists were going to play it. I wanted to hear their opinions on the horrific things that Diddy was being accused of. We'll see what happens here. That's all you can do, man. I, like I said earlier, I know everybody wants to have the hot take on this situation, but the reality is we don't know what's what, so you mm -hmm. got to let things play out. Diddy should have gave Cassie her publishing back first. That's what it seemed like. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. And they said absolutely nothing. They was all scurrying away from the conversation like a cowardly cat. That showed me the God in particular who was scurrying away from that conversation, bro, as if Diddy is the boogeyman. Now, Charlamagne the God not only scurried away from the conversation about Diddy and, you know, his horrific past, but he even offered up a slick endorsement of Diddy by saying, yo, Cassie should have gotten her publishing first. Subliminally saying that Cassie is only doing this to get back publishing or to be spiteful and that Diddy is innocent. But that's Charlamagne the God. He works for Revolt, so we pretty much expect it, right? You wouldn't criticize your boss. I wouldn't, right? But Joe Budden is somebody who we had a little bit more faith in. And Joe Budden also let us down by saying absolutely nothing but cop and please when asked to speak about Diddy and his horrific past. Like, for as much praise as I give Hove and a Puff and a Dame and just for all of the praise, right? Again, back to podcasters keeping some of their thoughts private and just like not having to share everything. I don't feel like I need to come in here and have word vomit about my discernment when it comes to some of the evil shit that goes on in the industry. Nor do I think I'm the mascot and spokesperson to be the deliverer of news for some of the evil shit that goes on in the industry or some of the treacherous, some of the things that are not ma uh, made not so public, right? Like I don't think the public would react well if they knew all of the locker room behavior of football players. That was Joe's response to his co-host telling him that people was hitting him up, waiting to hear Joe's take on a Diddy situation. And Joe's response is, well, we should be able to keep some of our opinions private, but bro, you talk about every trending news. Why are you now shying away from talking about Diddy? I don't. Oh, shit. True. But There's some wild shit in the music business. Mm -hmm. I came in here with Skane, Webb, and Nitty. Those are the three people that you can tie to me. I have been without a cosign. I have been without the backing. I have been without all of the tricks, treats, and perks that come along with having the powerful people behind you pushing you. Why do y'all think that is? If any one of these two show me the guy to Joe Budden was your source for reliable, unbiased information and takes, you should probably re-examine where you're getting your reliable, unbiased information from. Because these two exhibited that they are clearly in bed with the corporate and the infrastructure that they can't really speak on the head honcho at the top of the food chain. Now, there's a reason why, though, everybody is choosing and electing not to speak on Diddy because they know... All right, if they know what's good for them, they wouldn't speak on Diddy because Diddy affects a lot of things in hip-hop media and Diddy affects a lot of things in hip-hop, period. He can close down a lot of opportunities for you and shut your water off. So when academics decided to speak up, I was shocked. 
that Ack was going to speak up against Diddy and really tackle this issue. And what Academic says about the situation, I think is profound, but it's also dangerous for his potential career moving forward. Everybody else that y'all consider that you trust or whatever, they won't say a fucking word. I listened to The Breakfast Club. They were pathetic. You know what I mean? They were like, oh, okay, what, was it, what happened? Oh, well, prayers for everybody. They said this little generic thing, right? <laughs> Yo, they said Cassie was getting pummeled by dozens of male prostitutes without her consent in freak-offs, getting her ass beat to a bloody pulp, and, yeah, for decades. You know what the Breakfast Club says? Well, you know, prayers to everybody. This is, this is kind of crazy. I'm like, what? <laughs> they hear me call city girls flopped. Yo, man, act me hard on the females. What? Nigga, what? I'm like, yo, I see what it is. You know, uh, everybody unfolded. Academic starts off his live stream by calling out Joe Budden and others who opinions we respect about the culture who we believe are independent, reliable media personalities, and they present themselves as independent, reliable, unbiased media personalities. However, secretly, and this Diddy situation proves it, secretly, they're in bed with the corporate infrastructure and they're biased when it comes to the corporate infrastructure and they wouldn't dare go against the corporate infrastructure. But here's why academics play in a dangerous game. You see, it's one thing to give your opinion on Diddy. But when you're now trying to galvanize hip-hop media to now give their true opinions on Diddy, you're now public enemy number one. Because when it came time for certain other people, when it came time for L.A. Reid, even Joe was like, yeah, niggas been hearing. That's what I'm saying. When it came time for L.A. Reid, everybody said, well, I ain't gonna lie, there was some stories. Everybody said that. What, what, what did that just mean? That didn't mean all the allegations were right or they were wrong, but you knew that people were having rumblings and people thought or speculations occurred. My mom, my dad, my kids, and shit that I know a little bit about. I don't give a fuck who, what none of these people was doing outside of this. That's Cap. <laughs> Yo, this is such Cap. Yo, this is like the Diddy protection spell. I don't know what the fuck Diddy done did to the whole industry. That's Cap. Nigga, nigga sit and talk about weird old shit by, by our Kelly Michael Jackson, by every other person. But when it comes to Diddy, it's like, ask me about my mom, my, my, my mom, my, my girl, my son. Ask me about my, my, my pet dog. My, what the hell? Nah, nigga, the fuck we want to know about Diddy? Ack is 100% right. And I applaud Ack for standing on that island alone. Because I know that Revolt tried to do business with academics when he left Complex and Everyday Struggle. So there's some type of working relationship there. But he don't care. Like, he's saying his true opinion on this. While everybody else is copping, please, and staying quiet. And that's brave because the natural trajectory and progression of a media personality's career starts off as an independent media person, either YouTube, radio, and then you progress to daytime television and late night television, right? You become a late night host. That's the pinnacle of success. Academics doing this almost cancels out those possibilities completely. Because as long as Diddy is still alive, Diddy's going to make it almost impossible for academics to will and deal in his industry. Academics had already been blackballed by BET, because let's be real here, bro. BET had an award best hip hop media platform for a couple years in a row. And the fact that academics didn't get nominated not once shows, bro, that, yo, he's probably blackballed, right? They don't like him. I'm going to do something maybe at the end of the year. Maybe I started like a year wrap up. And, and I, I'm going to tell y'all now, it's really I want to do an award show. So I, I, know, I know Charlemagne and Joe did some shit. Listen, I. This disrespect here has made me realize why the fuck am, is academics who people know your value in the culture, you're looking to BET who's floundering and failing to give you some props. As y'all just heard from academics himself, he has expressed his frustrations in the past when it comes to BET and other corporations blackballing him and keeping him out. After what academics said yesterday, <laughs> Listen, he might, he might as well just get used to it, bruh. Because they finna make his life a living hell. But we applaud it. We stand by it. And, you know, I will 100% stand by academics and do whatever I got to do to stand by the truth and stand by independent media. Y'all let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think? And if you're still watching, man, click on this video here somewhere on my screen. 
to find out about the Nelly and Chingy beef that spilled over into the St. Louis streets. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. Um, out of here, folks. Peace.